a sick joke. And he drives it into right center field, hit a ton. This baby is way back. It has been one of the most embarrassing off-seasons of all time, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, the Giants. Apparently, we're going to sign Aaron Judge. A couple of reports came out on Twitter. I didn't really believe them, and then it didn't happen. About seven minutes later, it's not happening, and a Judge ends up re-signing with the Yankees. But then the Giants do sign, or do come to an agreement, to sign Carlos Correa to a 13-year massive deal, one of the biggest free agents available the Giants sign Correa. It's official, right? A couple of days past, we're getting ready for the press conference. Carlos Correa and his family are in a San Francisco hotel room, apparently, waiting for the press conference, and the Giants decide, you know what? Correa seemed to have a little ankle injury way back in 2014 before his MLB career even got started. And this is apparently cause for concern. They wanted to lay the press conference, and then the next thing you know, Carlos Correa and his agent jump ship and sign with the Mets, and the Giants lose out on Correa. Absolutely unbelievable. And now they have signed Michael Conforto to a two-year deal worth $36 million. Now, this is causing a lot of memes on the internet because Michael Conforto missed the entire 2022 season due to shoulder surgery. He just missed the whole year and the Giants wouldn't sign Correa because of a 2014 injury. It's just, you know the memes. I know you might say it's apples and oranges. One is a 13-year contract. One is a two-year contract. But the internet does not care about apples or oranges. And this meme is all over the place. And uh, it's, not, it's to be expected. Um, Carlos Correa, an injury from 2014? No! Conforto, out all the last year? That's what we want. Uh, so, you know, that's going to cause this meme to go all over the place. But the Giants have come to an agreement with Michael Conforto. And we will look at, you know, how this roster is shaping up in the outfield. Now, the outfields are looking quite a bit more solid after bringing back Jock Peterson, after signing Mitch Hanniger. And now we have, of course, Michael Conforto as well. And there are other options out there, but some of them are, are cause for concern. Obviously, Mike Yastrzemski is still here. Mike Yastrzemski had a little bit of a tough year last year, and it's just kind of questionable if he's going to be as good as we saw back in 2019 and 2020. But when I say that, it's funny because we have so many outfielders who were good in 2019, but haven't been that great the last couple of years. And Michael Conforto is yet another example. So we need a lot of bounce back seasons. Michael Conforto was amazing back from 2017 to 2019. He averaged almost 30 home runs a year. He hit 33 in 2019. And he was an all-star in 17. He probably should have been an all-star in 19. I'm not sure what happened. But he hit 257 with 33 home runs, 92 runs driven in. And, you know, he's got that kind of potential. But he was hurt all of last year. Back in 2020, even though that was a shortened year, he played in 54 games out of 60, and he hit 322. So he had a great year. He hit nine home runs. Probably would have hit well over 20 had it been a full season. So uh, he had four years where he was fantastic. And then in 21, he hit just 232, 14 home runs in 125 games, and then he misses all of last year. But I have really reason to be optimistic and he will bounce back. He's only 30 years old. And I think there's a good chance he's going to have a very solid year for the Giants. Hitting north of 25 home runs, shall I, shall I say. I don't know if he'll hit 30. But I think he'll hit 25 plus and, and be very solid for the Giants. I actually like this signing. But I understand why the internet is going to make fun of this deal. Because, uh, you know, the Giants just signed a guy who missed all of last year, but passed on Carlos Correa over something from 2014. And I know a lot of Giants fans are absolutely pissed off right now. I, I've said the same thing. Time is going to tell on Correa. Uh, I'm not wishing ill will on his career. But if his career does go south and everything goes wrong and he has injury issues and it's just a, a terrible contract with the Mets, the Giants will probably look better in that situation. Uh, I'm not hoping for that necessarily because I don't want you know, to wish ill will on anybody. But I'm just saying if, if, if it works out well for the Mets and they go win a bunch of World Series and Carlos Correa is just amazing and, you know, is, is in MVP talks and all of this and he's just incredible over there. Well, yeah, it's going to look pretty bad. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But uh, that said, 
Uh, this signing is in the books right here, and uh, the internet is all over this one. Um, Giants never wanted to spend big on Judge or Correa. They are a poverty franchise. That's what a lot of people are thinking. I mean, obviously, they didn't. I don't think that they signed Correa with intentions of not signing him at the end of the day. I don't know if they got cold feet, changed their mind, which is pretty embarrassing for an MLB franchise to come to an agreement on a contract and then get cold feet at that moment. But um, I really don't know. But look at what this guy says here. Carisco Lindoria. They'll find out he twisted his ankle in fifth grade and void the contract. I mean, this is the, the stuff that's going on. You have to take a risk at some point. You know, but at the same time, there is a physical and you got to pass the physical. But, you know, I was hoping it was going to be something a little more significant than a freaking 2014 little ankle issue before his career began. But we'll see. I mean, we'll have to wait and see what happens if he has a bunch of ankle issues over in New York. Um, but uh, the jury's out on that. But as for the Giants right now, like I mentioned, how their team is shaping up. Well, Mitch Haniger, again, we're hoping he gets back to 2019 form. We're kind of hoping that um, that Conforto gets back to 20. Well, I mean, he was good in 2020 for sure, but uh, 20, 2018, 2019, 2020 form. Come on. Um, Mike Yastrzemski, we need 2019 form from Mike Yastrzemski. 2020, he was pretty good. Uh, so, you know, we're not we, – last year, we, we don't want last year's performance from, you know, Lamont Wade. We need 2021 performance, not 2022 performance from Lamont Wade Jr. Um, we have some depth in the outfield. Elliot Ramos, I don't think he's going to work out, man. He didn't play that well in AAA. He wasn't good enough to stay in the big leagues when he was promoted. Austin Slater is always reliable, solid, but, you know, not a big superstar or anything. But he's a longtime giant. He'll, he's been here for a long time. Um, and uh, – we still got him as well. So, you know, we have some decent depth. There's still the DH spot for Jock and others. So, um, the outfield looks looks good. I, I wouldn't say it's the greatest outfield ever, but it looks pretty good. As long as we get, you know, like I said, we get the best production out of these guys are close to the best. If they all have off years like they've had at least recently, or, or in the case of uh, Michael Conforto didn't play at all, uh, and he had kind of an off year in 21, it's going to be bad. Um, the infield is not as good as it was just looking. Brandon Crawford's going to be a short. Flores right now is listed. I mean, I love Wilmer. He's listed as the starting third baseman on the website. We still have J.D. Davis, of course. David VR. Jury's out on how he's going to do. Tyro Estrada. I love Tyro. Um, La Stella, of course. I mean, we have some. It, it's, 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 a, it's a team with good depth. It's a team with good depth, but no major sluggers here. We're still missing that. Big, big superstar. We have we have good players. I mean, Peterson, Hanniger, you know, I mean, these are good players. But I'm just saying, um, unless Joey Bart comes out with a big, huge season. That's what we need. We need Joey Bart to come out and hit 45 home runs, okay, and uh, be in MVP talks. And we all know what's going on. The bullpen has really not got a lot of help this year. Have we not signed anyone for bullpen help this entire offseason? I don't think we have. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, as for the rotation, well, we added some depth. We got Stripling and Manaya. Uh, other than that, got to hope Di Sclafani bounces back. Logan Webb is the man. Alex Cobb, pretty good. Good good starts and bad. You never know. And Jacob Junis looked really good for a time last year, so we'll have to wait and see on him. Um, it's a team of depth, but lacking in real superstar power. But if everyone, I'll say the same thing I said in 21, if everyone has a really good year, there's a lot of potential on this team. Um, but that's a big ask, and that's pretty rare. 2021, everything came together. You can't expect that every year. You have to build a great team. Uh, and we do have some prospects coming through the system with uh, Harrison uh, looking amazing. He could be a savior in the rotation. And, of course, Marco Luciano as well, uh, amazing infielder. Uh, so we'll see, guys. Let me know what you think down below. That's all I got to say. Michael Conforto, uh, I like the contract. I do like the contract. I would have been thrilled if you told me before the season started, hey, we're going to sign Michael Conforto. Oh, great. Excellent. But we're also going to sign a serious superstar too, right? And thus Michael Conforto turns out to have a superstar year, which is not out of the question, but it's not something you can just count on. So we'll see what happens, guys, with Conforto. Missed all of 2022. Some of you guys are pissed. Let me have it down below in that comment section. Let the Giants have it. Tell me what you think. Be honest and let's discuss. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.